1951, Edward Sorrell didn't exist, but Edward Schwartz did. Let's see if we can find him here. The man who only cares for making money Lives a life that isn't necessarily sunny Likewise, the man who works for fame There's no guarantee that time won't erase his name The fact is, the only work that really brings enjoyment Is the kind that is for girl and boy men Fall in love, you won't regret it That's the best work of all if you can get it Holding hands at midnight Neath a starry sky Nice work if you can get it And you can get it if you try Strolling with the one girl Sighing sigh after sigh Nice work if you can get it And you can get it if you try I'm doing this over Why? Oh, well I never thought that drawing came out right, and it was in German. So we're trying it again, because it's, it's one of my great gag ideas. Now, when you were growing up during the Depression years, as Ed and I were, in the Bronx, there was nothing in the Bronx that you wanted to emulate, really. There was nothing in the Bronx that you wanted to go out and, and replicate in life except for one thing, what you saw in the movie theater. The fact is, the only work that really brings enjoyment is the kind that is for girl and boy men. And movies were the ideal, movies were the dream, and movies were to graduate us into this world that we wanted to be in and cartooning, or a life of an artist. Since we couldn't sing and dance, this was our way of doing it. To make up for not being able to act, to not being able to have the looks of a movie star, for not having the talent of what we really wanted to do, which was to be up there on the screen, you made a compromise. You made a serious compromise. You drew funny pictures. And if you look through Ed's work over the years, there are any number of cartoons that, uh, that talk to this point. Here is a, here is a strip he did, and here he is uh, self-caricature leaning over a drawing. And he says, strips, what a stupid, trivial way to go through life. If only I had lived in Rembrandt's time, I might have produced art of lasting value. But who'd, we, who'd want to be Rembrandt? Dreadful fellow, never paid debts, embezzled from his own son and got rid of his mistress by putting him into a loony bin. And so he goes on about Dagar and, and uh, Gauguin was such a bastard that even they had to get George Sanders to play him in the movies. Uh, Matisse, a sweet old man, but in truth he dumped his wife as soon as he hit it big and ignored his son, uh, and there's Picasso a monster, and so on and so on. Let's face it, he concludes, I'll never be a great artist. I'm just too nice a guy. So why did you think this would be a good image for the poster? I figured, what would people want to buy? And uh, if I did anything particularly self-indulgent, um, there had to be a good gag. So th this is... I thought this was one of the best gags I ever thought of. So, uh, so I thought I'd do that. And who knows, I, and I kept telling myself I could do this without tracing, which is the way I, my best drawings turn out. Ed is always talking to me about uh, drawing, you know, without tracing and, um, and he's right, of course, that the, the highest form of drawing is the drawing that is in, in totally immediate. I, was, I kept trying to find a, a, a middle ground where a spontaneous looking drawing, where a somewhat spontaneous drawing, but one that was planned, was good enough to be published. And that is how the, the, my so-called style evolved. It was, an effort, it was an effort to get back to the sketch, but make the sketch sufficiently um, finished so that they could publish it. 
it's the hardest kind of drawing to do, particularly if, is, as in Ed's case, you often are trying to do very complicated ideas and to do those ideas and set them up uh, without using pencil lines or tracing paper is very, very hard. You know, that's part of why I've always uh, been astonished at, at his stuff, because it looks easy, and it's not easy. No, he's got to be looking down. He's got to be looking down. I need, I still need the foundation of my, of a pencil drawing that I try to keep as loose as possible, but I still need it. No, no, I just won't do it. No, it's not godlike enough. There's just stuff in his work that just it just makes you want to to draw and 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 sketch, and uh, I uh, I emulated his work for for a long time and and couldn't get close to that to that kind of freshness that um, that's evident in all his stuff. Oh, that's better already. That's got some movement. Ed's work. Um, has that quality of aliveness. It, it doesn't feel like something that has been so worked on and, and produced in a way that it's sort of lost some of its vital juices. Uh, it still is full of, of blood. <laughs> uh, and I think that's what really makes his drawing so wonderful to look at. Well, that did it. I chaired the uh, 50th annual exhibition of the Society of Illustrators. And in doing that, we had decided to go through all the annuals and, uh, and, and call um, significant pieces or pieces that, that, uh, that revealed something about the whole evolution of, mm -hmm. of illustration over the decades and also over particular artists by, by showing something really early on and then something that they'd done uh, you know, that year. And I was, I was really struck by, um, by one or two of the drawings that, uh, that had Ed's signature on them. And I say had Ed's signature on them because you wouldn't know they were his. Seymour and Reynolds and I uh, did something called the Pushpin Almanac in 1953 in an effort to get some freelance work. However, after three years at Cooper Union, I no longer knew how to draw. I only knew how to do two-dimensional design, which was taught for three years at Cooper Union. Did you learn how to draw at Cooper? No, but you have to remember one thing, that the ethos in education was against drawing. Uh -huh. Not only at Cooper, uh -huh. not only at Cooper, but in every art school in the country. The creative part of work was no longer 
in the old-fashioned way of picture making. It was an abstraction. Drawing was simply not taught and not, not wanted. It was all about design, design, design. And, uh, and my poor little brain couldn't, couldn't uh, keep what little drawing talent I had. I couldn't do anything else. I, I, was, I was too afraid of, of pen and ink. But once I left Pushpin, and once I had to freelance, and there was absolutely no value, to, uh, commercial value to this, I had to learn how to draw. And, and the way I decided to do it was by doing children's books. Just imagine someone waiting at the cottage door Where two hearts become one who could ask for anything more and I remember doing these four illustrations because I remember doing them freehand and this was a really new experience for me. After I did Pablo Paint's a picture, I decided to try my hand at political satire. I did something called Moon Missing. And this was a satire on the Cold War. And um, it, made me, uh, it made me political. So that before long, I was uh, doing a lot of work for New York Magazine that was political. Holding hands at midnight neath a starry sky. Nice work if you can get it, and you can get it if you try. Strolling with the one girl. That's not funny, is it? No. He's not very funny. Yeah, no, we gotta go with the gotta go with the English sheep dog. There was one there was one other one. Oh here it is. Here it is, here it is. Yeah, this one. This one was funny. Yeah, that, that that's really, really funny. Most of my cartoons, my political cartoons, are about hypocrisy, but they're also about the unfairness. I consider to this day satire as a form of um, argument that is, goes way beyond illustration and may be more powerful than conventional editorial language. There's something that is more threatening about the visualization of, of some of these uh, points that are, are out there than words. He made it clear to the world through the work he was doing of what kind of person he was, what kind of artist he was. So uh, the rewards of that is that people then came to him to be himself. It's not about changing minds, it's, it, it's so much as it is about giving people who feel isolated, who feel alienated, and all the evidence around them tells them how alienated they, they are, you're giving the small piece of, of evidence that says, no, you belong. I do have a point of view, and most of it is negative. My best drawings are when I'm really, really angry and really, really pissed. And the church will do that for me every time. The politicians that you're savaging come and go. On the other hand, the church is always here. It's always the same goddamn church, and it's wonderful to be able to tackle it. Early 70s, I was doing good drawings and bad drawings. Here's a good drawing, Jacob Javits. And also doing every now and then, tightening up, getting very constipated, like this lousy drawing of Dean Rusk. My ideas were pretty heavy handed too. This is a, this is an eating a pie made out of dead skulls. Kind of bad. Uh, this was a little bit better. It was very uneven, very uneven in the 70s. I did good work, I did bad work, and um, it was to be that way forever. Uh, he's a very self-dramatizing fellow, <laughs> and I think that uh, he um, likes to whip up a lot of Sturm und Drang before he, he works. Okay, so... Jesus Christ, I bet they had an italic. No. 
No, I, 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 it's not right. The lettering is constipated. The rest of the drawing is free and loose and, and, uh, and this thing, and, and it's all, it doesn't look, it doesn't look, I have to fool everybody to think that I, that I did this direct when I'm, when in fact I cheated, and the, che the cheating is, was my downfall. It's almost like everything, in a way, has to be a bit of a battle with that, you know, that uh, um, even the process of uh, working has to be like wrestling with angels or something. Ed had this double thing going on, which uh, I think he still has, this combination of self-denigration and arrogance. Because on one level, he thinks he's, it, that he's not a real artist, that it's worthless, that why is he bothering? On the other, he knows he's better than anyone else. He sneakily knows this. Uh, and that sense of inadequacy, which uh, is such a part of his character and such a part of his persona, and anybody who's known him, has known him over the years, uh, uh, knows about it because it's not anything he hides. What his career could possibly mean to a young artist, uh, I mean, one of the things is to accept yourself in all of your foibles and make hay out of it. Young people, are, when they're starting into the field, they're looking for a style. And what they don't realize is that you are the style. I mean, I could keep on doing this forever. It's important to know when to stop. And sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I get it too dark. Maybe it's already too dark. You you can't you can't draw pictures that aren't a reflection of yourself. It just can't be done. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get some trying to get some deep blue. I don't know if I have any. Need some purple. And I'm a little disorganized, just a little bit disorganized. It wouldn't hurt if I had a clean palette, you know? That wouldn't hurt either. You know, this is the iconic yeah. version. It's sort of like uh, Michelangelo's God giving life to Adam. And uh, there, there are a number of paintings where you see a, a hand coming down from heaven and giving him the tablets. But this is the famous one. This is the one I always parody. God knows how many times I've done this parody. I have no shame. I mean, if Alfred Hitchcock can make the same movie three times, I don't see why I can't. Oh, Jesus. What am I doing? You can't always uh, tell what an artist is really like just by looking at his paintings, but it's different with a cartoonist. So um, I think anybody going around my show will have a pretty good idea of who I am, what I believe in, what I think is funny. And, um, and they'll also, I hope, see tremendous improvement in my work as I got older, and they'll see that I'm really kind of obsessed with learning how to draw. That I think that's why I just keep going and I want to keep going because it took me so long to get good. Um, I think people for whom it comes easy get bored with it, but I'm not bored with it. I just want to keep getting better and better. So I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to work. Nice work if you can get it, and you can get it if you try. Just imagine someone waiting at the cottage door, where two hearts become one who's good at for anything more. Loving one who loves you, and then taking that vow. Nice work if you can get it, and if you get it, Oh, won't you tell me how?